Hello and welcome to Swift TV. I'm Blair Jacobs, sitting inside one of the two brand new models from Swift Group. Now it's taken five years and over two million pounds in research and development to get this far, and the results are spectacular. As I say, the two brand new models, the Swift Elegance and the Sterling Continental, new for 2014. And I hope in the other two videos on this site, you'll have seen a little bit more about the styling of the interior and the exterior. In this film, I want to concentrate very much on how this caravan is put together. What makes it so distinctive? Because after all, a caravan is a caravan, isn't it? No, of course it isn't. And this caravan is going to help me explain why. But of course, the caravan can't do all the talking. I do need a bit of help. Design director of Swift, Chris Milburn, is with me. What have you done to your caravan? Well, Blair, we've, uh, we've cut a hole in the side of one of our early prototypes to really showcase the new Smart HT uh, construction that we have uh, with this van. Well, let's talk about the construction because this is a, a big change, isn't it? It is. And the objectives we set ourselves when we started this project five years ago was to build a caravan for the future that was strong and robust, could be built with consistent quality and was built to last. We knew that we'd have to look at new materials, and in particular non-hygroscopic materials, materials that don't absorb water and engineered materials, materials that would allow us to optimise and develop the design of the construction and analyse it through our CAD analysis tools. And that's where Smart HT was born. What does Smart HT stand for? Well, Smart HT has all the same benefits as our current smart construction technology, but it utilises more high-tech materials. And we went in search of a number of new materials for this particular construction. And we researched a number of materials that were very strong, um, but not particularly thermally efficient, a number of materials that were thermally efficient but not particularly strong, in search of finding the appropriate materials for this particular uh, product. And there was an awful lot of materials out there that would do what we wanted but were extremely expensive. So in the end we settled on some key materials for this particular project, which I'll show you with this uh, mm -hmm. mock-up that I've got here. Mm -hmm. Just take the skirt off. <coughs> So the first decision we made was what was the material we were going to use for the walls. And we decided to use a very strong and robust GRP surface for the exterior. But we wanted to make sure we got a balanced panel to make sure that there wasn't any thermal differences between, or thermal expansion differences between the outside and the inside walls. So it meant that we had to have GRP on the inside of the, of the caravan as well. And so we worked extensively with a, uh, a supplier who supplies the paper and a supplier who can laminate that paper onto GRP to get a, a decorative surface on the inside that was acceptable, which allowed us to then achieve a balanced panel, which was then sandwiched in the centre with uh, a polystyrene. So that, the resultant uh, panel is a very strong and tough panel that we've used for both the roof and, uh, and the walls. Strong, tough and readily decorated. Exactly. So you don't need to worry about doing exactly. anything else. That's right. Now, this black area is the floor. What, what about the floor? Yeah, the next challenge was to, um, to come up with a, a strong and thermally efficient floor. And the materials that we chose for that, we ended up looking at the strengths of each of the uh, materials that we had and building a five laminate floor system so that we built, built upon the strengths of each one of those, uh, those core materials. So we start in the centre of this with a very thermally efficient uh, expanded polystyrene core which is then sandwiched between two um, layers of uh, plastic honeycomb material, which have got immense strength. And then on top of that, a woven um, GRP surface. And you can see in the surface of there how it's, uh, it's woven, which gives it mm. uh, its, its extra strength. Mm. Now, once we've got all of those particular materials in place, then the, the next challenge was how do we join all of those materials together? And this is where the aluminium comes in that you've used as a join. Now, what challenges did that provide? Yes, we have used aluminium. Aluminium is a fantastic material. It's particularly strong and light, but it is a good thermal conductor. And so we had to make sure that we weren't uh, designing a jointing system that would cause condensation. So what we've done is we've broken that thermal conductivity by putting a, a, a thermal break in the middle of it. So this bit here, which is uh, commonly known as a cold bridge, the sort of thing that you'd see in modern double glazing uh, window systems. 
and that has allowed us to, uh, to, to develop this jointing system without that condensation occurring. Now we did test all that digitally uh, in, our in our early uh, designs to, to, to check the theory. We then committed to tooling and, uh, and built some components which were then tested in the, uh, in the cold chamber to make sure that no condensation occurs on the inside of these particular components. You'll also notice within these aluminium sections that we've got the integrated awning system so that keeps that nice and flush which helps the aerodynamics and we've also put into the bottom here into the uh, what we call in the sole rail little clips in here which allow the um, the skirt to um, to slide onto that easily nice and, uh, and makes a nice neat joint you'll also notice there's no sealant along the top we've got a co-extruded seal which makes for a much neater and tidier joint system on that uh, on that particular part it's a very neat looking design there of course it would be um, where do you stand on exclusivity of this in terms of patents? Well, that's right. We have uh, applied for a number of patents throughout this, uh, this whole project. Um, the key ones here really being the, the cold bridge system that we've got on the aluminium extrusions and the floor itself, which is a, a, new, a unique design to us. And, of course, all of this, it looks very detailed here. Of course, it all refers to, well, there's the, the ceiling and the, yes, uh, the, right. the, uh, the walls the there. Van. Absolutely. So is all this stuck together? Yes, it is. And we work very closely with our extrusion uh, suppliers and our adhesive specialists to make sure that we've got a very robust uh, connection, got a good flow of adhesive through all of these joints. So that connects all of the, the roof, the walls, the floor all together to create a very strong and rigid box. But of course, that needs to be connected to the chassis. So what we've done with the chassis is we've made sure that we've got pure blocks in the, uh, in the floor to allow for a very good bolting system right through into the chassis to give a very rigid structure. So does all this make the caravan less susceptible to letting in water? Yes, that's right. Uh, there's no timber or wood in the body shell of this van uh, at all. Uh, all the materials that we've used are totally impervious to water and none of them can be damaged by water. The other thing is that the, uh, as far as the, uh, the sides are concerned, they're all CNC cut to make sure that we've got a very tight tolerance to all of the, uh, the exterior door and all of the lock locker doors that, uh, that are fitted to them. And they're all clamped as well. So they've got a clamping system, which again, makes for a very good tight seal to the, uh, to the body shell. Now we've spoken a lot about the, about the, you know, the roof, the wall and the, and the floor here. Um, what goes on at the front and the back? Oh, well, that's a, that's a very good question. Uh, what we've been looking at so far is a, a two-dimensional section. It gets a lot more complicated at the ends. Should we go and have a look? Yes, let's go. Okay. Another cutaway here as well. Yes, so the, uh, the box needs two ends, um, and those need to support the aerodynamic targets that we set ourselves. So we needed to try and extend the aluminium cant rail section that we've just spoken about through the front, but with a, a, a curved shape. Um, and the material we chose to do that with was uh, esrim. And esrim is a structural reaction injection molded material that is commonly used in the automotive industry on low volume, high performance uh, vehicles because it's incredibly strong and very lightweight. So that gave us the opportunity to replicate the jaws that we spoke about that, um, that uh, fix around the, uh, the composite panels and extend that down through the front panel, which gave us the opportunity to create uh, a large amount of plan shape which supported the aerodynamics. But the other benefit that it gave us was it gave us the ability to move the front bulkhead forward and correspondingly at the rear, the rear bulkhead rearwards, to gain an extra 100 millimetres of space within inside the van. We've taken that opportunity then to extend some of the bed lengths in certain vans uh, and in other vans change the, the length of the vans to, uh, to give us some opportunities to, uh, to reduce weight. The other thing that you'll notice here is that the grab handle that we've got here in this cutaway is mounted directly into that SRIM panel, which gives a great strength to, um, uh, to the mounting of that particular uh, component. But the other thing you'll notice too is the fact that uh, the investment in this tooling has given us the opportunity to re reduce the number of parts that we have within the, uh, the front of the van and give us consistent quality time after time. So does everything you've explained make this vehicle easier to build? Yes, it does. This caravan has been designed with the ease of manufacture in mind. Uh, obviously, the easier it is to build, the better the build will be and the more consistent the quality will be. The, uh, the more difficult it is to, to assemble, then obviously the, vary, the quality will vary. The whole production process of this particular caravan has been redesigned. So all of the, uh, the components that, uh, that come together in the factory have all been uh, analysed to make sure that uh, there are new jigs and support structures in place to make sure that uh, everything remains in place and has the dimensional stability that's necessary to build a caravan of this quality. 
Um, what you'll see in the factory is examples like the floor, for example, that is uh, 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 supported in all its corners to make sure it remains completely flat while all the ancillary components are, uh, are bolted to it. So that creates the, the platform for all the rest of the components to, uh, to sit on. When you look at the whole package, there's so much change. It must have been an extraordinarily expensive project. Well, the focus on increased tooling has allowed us to replace complex assemblies with simpler molded components. This, of course, has meant that we've had to invest heavily in sophisticated tooling in new, new machinery at our Cottingham factory. The total investment in tooling, testing, CNC machinery, and the redevelopment of the whole production line has cost us in the region of two and a half million pounds. I mean, it seems obvious to say, but with this level of high-tech construction, it's a, it's a project, it's a caravan that, that really moves the whole design of caravans on, doesn't it? It must have taken an awful lot of, an awful lot of resource to achieve that. Yes, we have. I mean, all departments here at Swift have been involved in this project from beginning to end. Uh, and our key suppliers, we've got quite a, a good range of key suppliers that have been putting a lot of uh, R&D work, a lot of resource into developing some of the components that we've, uh, that we've been discussing. Um, I think, you know, as a, as a product, it really does move caravanning forward. And I think it's, uh, it's wholly appropriate that this product is now being launched in the, uh, the 50th anniversary of, uh, of Swift. Well, thank you very much for showing us around the, what is a fairly extraordinary caravan in its own right with part of it missing anyway. Chris, thank you very much. Lovely very to much. see you. Um, probably safe to say you won't see this particular caravan on the road anymore. Chris has finished with enjoying it for the odd weekend or two, but you may well, if you go to some of the caravan shows in the UK, see this on the Swift stand, which I very much hope you'll pay a visit to. Of course, for the layout, the plans and the specifications, of the finished article, then do please go to the website swiftgroup.co.uk.